Hi, in this video we are going to talk about maybe the most famous selection algorithm, the so-called quick select. So it is a selection algorithm as we have discussed in the previous section in order to find the case smallest or largest item in an unordered array. If we are looking for the largest one or the smallest one, okay, it is an easy problem. We just have to use a simple for loop. We just have to iterate through the data in linear time complexity and have to track whether we have find the smallest or the largest one or not. But in this case, we would like to find the second or the third or the fifth smallest or largest item. That's what being called the case statistics. It is a bit complex. Hoare constructed the algorithm, so that's why this quick select is often called the Hoare algorithm. It has a very good average case running time, or though n, so linear time complexity. But a worst case scenario is quadratic, or though n squared. It's very important that this is an in-place algorithm, so we do not need any extra memory. We have been discussing in the previous sections that we may construct binary search trees or hash tables or heaps in order to find the case order statistics. But on the other hand, quick select is in place, so it doesn't need any extra memory. The concept is similar to that of quick sort. We choose a PVO item at random, we partition the array, and instead of recursing into both sides, we just take one side. So we have the partitioned array, we have the left subarray and the right subarray, and instead of using both of them, we are going to use just a single one. And why is it good? Because the quick sort n log n time complexity can be reduced to ordo n linear time complexity very, very fast. So we have two phases the partition phase and the selection phase. What about the partition phase? The partition method is just for partitioning the array according to the PIVO item. So we choose a PIVO value at random. We just have to generate a random number in the range first index to the last index. We are able to do it in C++, we are able to do it in Python or Java without any problem. And then we have to rearrange the list or the array in a way that all elements less than the PIVO are on the left side of the PIVO and others on the right side of the PIVO. It then returns index of the PIVO items. It's very important that at the end of the partitioning method we have to return the index of the PIVO because with the help of this index we are able to decide whether we are terminate our algorithm or not. So for example, we have this array and we want to find the second greatest item. By the way, it doesn't matter in the partition phase whether we are looking for the second greatest, the second smallest or whatsoever. We just have to make the partitioning. So we have the 7, the minus 2, the 5, the 8, the 1 and the 6. So an, an ordered array. We generate a PIVO number at random, for example 5. And we have to make sure, and basically that's what the partition phase does, that we have to decide that, okay, what are the items that's smaller than 5 and what are the items that are greater than 5. The items that are smaller than 5 is going to be on the left side, so on the left subarray, and the items that are greater than the PIVO item is going to belong to the right subarray. So in the end of the partitioning phase, we are going to end up something like this. We have the items 1 and minus 2 that are smaller than 5 and we have the 8, 7 and 6 that are greater than the 5. So we have the left subarray and the right subarray. So we are done. We return the index of the PIVO and of course in the course of the algorithm we may have to make several partition procedure. It's very important that we just need one half of the array. That's what we have been discussing that is very very similar to quicksort but instead of recursing into both of the subarrays, so the left subarray and the right subarray, we just use the single one. If we are looking for the small items, for example, we would like to find the smallest one or the second smallest one, the third smallest one, then we are going to choose the left side, the left subarray. We are going to choose the right subarray if we want to find the large items, for example, the largest, the second largest, the third largest, and so on. 
So if you are looking for large items, we go to the right. If you are looking for the small items, we go to the left subarray. What about the selection? After the partitioning, we are looking for the quay smallest item, for example. In this case, it is just for demonstration purposes, we are looking for the smallest item. But we are able to find the largest item just the same way. So we keep the left subarray in the partition phase. Why the left subarray? Because we are looking for the smallest items. If you are looking for the smallest item, we are choosing the left subarray. If you are looking for the largest items, we are going to choose the right subarrays. So after the partitioning, first of all, we have the index of the pivot because that's what this method, this partition method returns. And there are three cases possible. Whether the pivot is exactly equal to the k, we have to specify this k in advance, so at the beginning of the algorithm, so we, we know for certain that was the value of k. And we have the pivot because that's what have been returned from the partition method. If they are equal, it means that we have found the k smallest item we are after, and we just have to return the array at the kth index. And why? Because this is how partitioning works. We know for certain that after the partition phase, there are exactly k-1 items that are smaller than the pivot. In this case, the pivot is equal to k, so that's why k-1 items or the index of the pivot-1 items that are smaller than the pivot. That's the main reason why we do partitioning. If the k is smaller than the pivot, what does it mean? that the case smallest item is on the left side of the pivot. That's why we can discard the other subarray. Unlike quicksort, we can decide for sure that, okay, we have to consider the left subarray, for example. If the k is greater than the pivot, we are certain that the k smallest item is on the right side of the pivot. So we can discard the left subarray, and we just have to make the same step recursively on the right side of the pivot. And basically, that's all about the algorithm. We have to make the partitioning, we have to make the selection. What's the end of the algorithm when the k is equal to the pivot? It means that we have find the index we are looking for. So the best case performance is linear, ordo n, but the worst case scenario is ordo n squared, so quadratic, not so fast. The average running time is ordo n. So in the main, if we run our algorithm several times, it's going to do OK. But the worst case running time is the so-called quadratic complexity. For example, we want to find a maximum in a sorted array, and we always choose the first item to be the pivot. In this case, this is the first case scenario, ordo n squared. It is very, very slow. And that's why more advanced selection techniques came to be, such as the median of medians method and the so-called intro select, which is going to make sure that the worst case performance is linear complexity too. Thanks for watching.